Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I'm Andrew Wilson. I am the founder of Doctors for Doctors and Nurses for Nurses. I actually work as a chiropractor in Port Elgin, uh, full time, and then uh, I volunteer with all of you folks here on the weekends and some weeknights. Um, so, uh, Doctors for Doctors was founded in 2011 uh, in a pretty big way where I had met someone in Nicaragua um, and I wanted to support uh, that person through their medical school so that they could go and give sustainable health care to their community. Uh, that was how this thing started. Uh, we're still very much in that model of uh, that type of uh, international development and we are still only working in Nicaragua, we're still really only working with the same local partners. Uh, not much has changed since that initial uh, foundation. We are slowly growing out of that now, this year. And so this is a very big year for us and I'm, I'm really excited for that. This is probably the first major step outside of that initial, um, that initial year that this thing started. So just to go back to Doctors for Doctors and uh, what it is and what it stands for, um, to start off by talking about our mission. So our mission reads, through education and financial aid, we support Nicaraguans with a passion to increase local access to healthcare. And I think that that is a, a mission that still holds true. Uh, we update it slightly every year, and that is currently our mission. Um, what that means is that uh, we are supporting Nicaraguans in ways that they want support in the short term so that they we can empower them to become doctors or become like basically we are empowering young Nicaraguan people to gain uh, power in their communities and then distribute that power to increase the health of other people in their in their lives and that's essentially what it is uh, that is our mission and that is what drives us forward so you'll see that in research, you'll see that in our operations, uh, but you'll also see that in our programs. Our vision um, is we envision a day when every Nicaraguan will have access to sustainable, locally driven, and quality healthcare, which I, I think is still a very important uh, overarching goal of that is the ideal, that is the dream. Um, and so everything that we are doing actually advances it towards that. Um, and as long as our mission is achieving that, then we are doing good. Uh, so to go back to us as an organization and, uh, and our values, so our values are solidarity, which is the idea of standing with the people that we are supporting and listening to them, uh, even though sometimes it may not make sense or it might be hard, um, doing absolutely everything we can to support them in the ways that they ask for directly. Um, Local, the idea of supporting local development as much as possible, that actually came up this weekend when I was talking, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but uh, the idea of hiring a Nicaraguan executive director, that it has to be someone from the community, um, someone local to Nicaragua, and that we actually drew a solid line by saying we were uh, not going to hire, uh, if for a long term, uh, an international person to do the work. Uh, in Nicaragua. And I, I stand by that value, and this is that value coming out um, to play. Uh, humility. So this is us acknowledging our ignorance. Uh, this is when Mike says in the middle of a workout session, wait, just so we all know and we're all clear here, no one really knows anything here. That's where that's coming from. It's coming from that humility of we need to check all of our assumptions. We need to make sure that our assumptions are we need to understand that our assumptions might very well be wrong because we're not from Nicaragua and we don't live there, but this is all like a, a best work in progress and that's what that humility looks like in daily working sessions with us. Uh, lifelong, this is a super important value. Uh, last year, Mike framed to me, which charity would you rather have? Would you rather support the four students that we have right now for the rest of their lives and we never take on another student again or make another commitment again? or would you rather really grow our education program? And let's say we sponsor 10 doctors every year. 
uh, or we graduate 10 doctors every year, but once they graduate, we don't support them anymore. And uh, the, the organization is very well geared towards supporting the people for the rest of their lives, uh, if, even if that means that we don't help, uh, if we don't take on any other new students, that that is okay, uh, that this is about lifelong uh, relationships and lifelong commitments to the people that we are supporting in Nicaragua because uh, those are the relationships that build trust uh, and those are the relationships that uh, help a lot of people uh, at the end of the day. And that is something that I very much believe in. Uh, the idea of doing things evidence-based, uh, that is essentially why Ahmed is here, uh, to bring um, strategic directions and research into what we do so we can do it better. Basically, that's just acknowledging the fact that there are other people out there doing this kind of work, and they've probably learned some lessons too, and we can learn from them. Uh, efficiency being that everything we do, uh, we try to do it in the, in the most effective and efficient way, and empowering local leaders um, to, to make that happen faster. Uh, the idea of fairness. So, uh, this one, I think, is a value that ultimately stems from some type of like justice, but it's just that idea that everybody deserves the fundamental right of healthcare. Um, that you know, just because we live in Canada doesn't mean that we deserve access to healthcare when other people don't, or just because we live in certain communities in Canada, you know, um, that's a whole other thing. But the idea of fairness is uh, is very much in that kind of frame of justice of quality um, and striving for uh, better um, for the people who are underserved in the world. And then teamwork. And uh, we, we've talked about this a lot where the, the biggest threats to any organization are usually its internal drama. And so for us to operate and to actually carry out this mission, we have to function and support each other as a team every step of the way. And uh, this weekend was a really good, um, it's always a good reminder of that at the AGM. Um, but uh, I think it's a good kind of summary of those values as well. So those, that is our mission, our vision, and our values. Um, I do want to give our student updates next as well. So we currently have four students and uh, one student that is being called a DFD and NFN auxiliary student, which I will talk about as well. So the four students are Brian, our first student sponsored. He is actually... He, has, he is technically a doctor. He is Dr. Brian, which is really great to be able to say for the first year at an AGM. Uh, and I should start referring to him as Dr. Brian. Um, so Dr. Brian um, just graduated last year and is finishing up his uh, residency now. And then he actually ends his school formally in March. And then he does a thesis for the very end of his medical education. And he's done that in October, November um, deadline. So then he is, uh, presumably, unless he goes on to some uh, like really intense type of specialty, which we don't know about yet, uh, he will be done school and working in his community. And that's where the uh, research grants with Ahmed and um, you know, utilization of the student groups, I think, is actually going to come in next year, uh, next, next school year, in a really big way. Uh, our next student sponsored was Kimberly. Uh, she had a heck of a year in 2018 because her school uh, was canceled in uh, April, like many other, like our other students as well. Uh, her parents had survived through the Nicaraguan um, crisis many years ago, and so they kind of just grounded her and said, hey, you're not going back to school, uh, you're not really going inside very much, you're just kind of staying low, keep your head down, and we'll get you back in school when it opens up. And then her school just opened up uh, towards the end of 2018. So she is safe and sound and back in school and probably lost about half a year in medical school um, because of the political crisis, which overall uh, is, a, is a pretty great outcome consider, considering some of the other things that have happened. Um, Brandon would be our third student sponsored and he was probably hit the hardest by the crisis uh, economically. So his family, uh, his dad is a, a fisherman in Nicaragua, and uh, he, was, he was really hit because his family didn't have a means to support itself, so then he moved to Costa Rica to then get a job with his family so that they could pay to just maintain like basic living conditions for his family. 
So his school shut down. He moved to Costa Rica, and his school uh, started up at the very end of last year. And then uh, he is re-entering his school now in February. So he's actually still working in Costa Rica. I was on the phone with him last night. And he will be finished working on February 15th. And then his school actually starts on February 18th, which is amazing. And we, he's done a bit of a roller coaster with us because he was like, I can't do school for another year or two until my family is back financially. Um, but then at the last second, his family prioritized him going to med school. And I guess they found another way to figure that out. And so he is able to return to medical school, which is fantastic without a huge uh, loss there. Um, that's excellent. And then our last student is Victor. And Victor is our first dental student. We sponsored him in a very formal way last year. And uh, he was also kicked out of school, unfortunately, for the political crisis, um, just like all of our other students except for Brian, um, because all the schools were canceled. And then Victor ended up going back to medical school at the very end of 2018, or dentistry school at the very end of 2018. So he is back safe and sound in school as well. Everything is rolling fine with him for 2019. Uh, he's actually still going back to his community and doing dental health programs where he gives free dental care to people. Um, which is, yeah, so all very good news with our four students. We do have what's called a DFD and NFN auxiliary student, which is the first time we have that because we found uh, funding for another student uh, named Cindy who is not an official DFD and NFN student because she doesn't want to work in communities uh, long term, uh, but we can help her fund her education because we found a funder who can just support this young woman in medical school in Nicaragua, which I also think is a very uh, worthwhile thing. Um, and so it's not quite the same, but we're, we created an understanding about what that relationship looks like and the fact that we can still give financial aid to people who need it, uh, even though they don't just fit within our like box of, of value set, which I think is good. We are trying to accommodate as much as we can. Um, broad Nicaragua update is now things are uh, back to normal in the sense of there are no violent protests in Nicaragua. Mikey and I plan to go down uh, to Nicaragua in February to hire our Nicaraguan executive director and to further establish nurses for nurses in Nicaragua. I presume it will be safe. Uh, I don't think we are going to meet any large issues. Still, we're not going to book our flight tickets until about a week before, just to be safe. But um, as of right now, there's not really a lot of violence in front of the scenes in Nicaragua. Um, there's a lot of unrest to do with the feeling towards the government, and so that could break out at any time. And nobody knows what's going to happen or when that is going to happen. Uh, but overall, the, the economy is still taken a huge hit because tourism is just off the shelf and tourism was a massive industry for Nicaragua in uh, 2017 and 2018 until that happened in April. So uh, that is going to very slowly put itself back together over many years because its reputation has been damaged and people don't feel like it's a safe country anymore because of all the, all the um, uh, embassies had to, had to leave for a short period of time. So that will slowly build itself back together uh, which will hopefully affect our students in a very positive way over time. Um, the biggest update this year that I have to give is that we are hiring a Nicaraguan executive director. This is our first staff member. This is a person who is going to represent us on the ground in Nicaragua and actually be our, our hands and our feet uh, in, in Nicaragua. So they are going to meet with our students, they are going to help run research, uh, they are going to uh, connect us to new people, potentially uh, nurses or, or other doctors. They are going to help our students find jobs while they are graduating. Um, this is a very important and powerful person within our organization. And all of the monthly donations so far have gone to supporting that role. And they will continue to go to support that role, which will expand over time. We are starting off with a part-time employee um, and, and expanding on that role as we, as we move forward. Um, and so that is a, that's a huge update. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I think we're going to start off, it looks like about one or two days per week for, the, for about half a year, and then expand the job outwards from there as we have other requirements in fundraising or in communications or in operations or um, with Nurses for Nurses as it develops uh, or with research. So that's what that looks like. To me, that is very exciting. 
the very last thing I want to talk about today is what's called our alumni network. Because our first student, Brian, is graduating, we technically have an alumni network of one, which I love <laughs> referring to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the alumni network of one, uh, of Brian. Uh, because he is graduating, he is our first student to graduate, we need to understand how that looks like, how he is connected to other doctors in his community, and uh, we want to make him as connected as possible to our students that are in so he can mentor them, but also doctors that are uh, you know, older and more experienced than he is so that he has a, as much of a head start as possible. And that's what building that alumni network looks like, along with supporting the, the programs that Brian wants to develop in his community. Um, so, for example, that's why Ahmed, as the director of research, will be coordinating the programs Brian wants to do in his rural community uh, and supporting it either through grant funding or through donations uh, for that. So that's what our alumni network looks like and has the potential for. Uh, so that is the end of my update. Um, I'm sure it will be the longest update. I apologize for that. But does anyone have any questions for me based on that?